Okay, today we got Gladiator Complex. Why? I'm kind of on a kick with it. I like it. I was kind of banged up a little bit. Shoulders were, or well, the one shoulder. It's kind of crunchy. And uh, this is a great complex for, um, to do when you got a little aches and pains. Um, because it's mostly, primarily, a swing based program. Anyway, I got 30 minutes today because I want to bump up the intensity a little bit because I don't have any work today, I'm off, so we can go a little bit longer. The first 100 reps is gonna be with double 20s. Maybe the first 150, I might do three and three. I'm thinking about that, but then it's gonna be double 24s to finish. I have moved away a little bit from the armor builder, simply because, to me, that one is more for strength gaining purposes. I'm confident in how I handle the 24s. So from now till January, what I want to do with those is really push them. Push what I can do with double 24s. So, and the Gladiator is a good bridge to get there, I feel like. But I want to go a little bit longer today. So I'm throwing in at least 100 reps with double 20s. Because I do enjoy training with the double 20s. Honestly, I feel like if you're a guy, you get to double 20s, you really don't need to go any heavier. If you get really proficient with double 20s, you're set. It is, it's 90 pounds. If you can do a few hundred reps in a reasonable time with double 20s, you're in pretty good shape and you're strong enough for everything in real life. Shorts are back because it's 80 degrees today for some reason in November. So that's cool. I know it's not global warming or whatever the fuck. Because there were days back in August when it was like 40. Just as an aside, you know, it's nobody says global warming anymore. When I was little, I remember Al Gore saying that by 2020, Florida wasn't going to exist anymore because it was going to be entirely underwater. The sea levels haven't risen an inch. So that's kind of crazy. It's all a bunch of bullshit so they can tax us more take more of our money because those people do not generate profit all they do is take <laughs> fuck the government <laughs> Thank you. 
Hey, yeah, I fuck the government. Um, but because we'll never totally get rid of it, at least not yet. Trump 2024. It's the literal last day to vote. So go do that. Because I agree with Elon and Rogan. If uh, Harris wins, there's no more elections. On another note, it's, it's November, so it's like mustache November, no shave November, the kids do no nut November now, I don't know why, but uh, complete one of the challenges of your dude. Now, I know I did say I was going to do unilateral stuff, and I did, but it's kind of boring. The single kettlebell training is not exactly a focal point for me. It's just to kind of loosen things up. Um, I don't think it's particularly relevant to demonstrate. Everybody, you can, there's a million videos that only use a single kettlebell. My niche within kettlebells is that most people do not train doubles with the kind of volume and uh, intensity that I do. Really, you have to go into the sport where they'll do 10 minute sets. And that's about it. Most people aren't gonna do that, myself included. I think it's miserable. And let's say you fatigue yourself to the point where you can't do anymore in a 10 minute set and you get 120 reps. If you pace yourself, you can get 200 plus in half an hour. What do you think is going to be more effective? Yeah, the 20 or 30 minute session. Especially as the weights go up. Yeah, I can do virtually 15 minutes straight with double 18 to get 150 reps of long cycle before I collapse. But if I just um, expand that to 20 or 30 minutes, how many more reps can I get without feeling like I'm gonna die? as uh, quickly and when you do uh, 10 reps a minute when you do 10 reps a minute of long cycle, um, 
if you do it proper, you only got like five seconds before the next set starts. Maybe 10 if you're really proficient, but so it might as well be uninterrupted. Yeah, double twenties feel good. Goodbye, double twenties. Hello, double twenty fours.
You notice I don't talk as much with these. That's the difference an extra 16 pounds makes on this complex. Man, I was sick two weeks ago, and I still can't quite shake the congestion. Remember, first and foremost, this is a conditioning complex when done in this manner. See we're at um, four press. And the last one in this chain is four press again. It'll be eight press for your press one, eight squats. Otherwise, you do four. It's not a hypertrophy program.
Oh, again, double twenties. I might have screwed up the order on here. I guess I'll find out after the next four cycles. So I'm intending to do 150 reps with each pair. Um, I might have only done two rounds with 24s. If that's the case, then I'll swap it out. If this isn't the final, the sixth round here, I kind of lost count. So, for each 100 reps, you do 12 squats and 12 press. So if you go by 300 reps, you only get 36 of each one. That's why it's not a hypertrophy program. Just putting that out there to emphasize my point. This is for conditioning. I know it doesn't matter if your squats, your front squats like right here or out here or up this way resting on your shoulders. They really don't matter that much. All are good. 
I'm either done or I got to do 50 with the 24s. That sucks. Grip starting to go. I think next thing I'm gonna do with these double twenty fours is clean and push press. He moms. So I had, and I should have kept track of the rounds, but I wanted to get my 150 in with these and then finish off with the 20s. I should have just done 150 with the 20 straight through. This is the most volume with doubles I've done in a while, especially with the weight. The 150 rest with the 20s offsets the extra 50 with the 24s, so. Okay, that should be the sixth round. I hope I didn't mess up that badly. Just the order got out of whack. Oh, 
tell. I think you can tell by how I'm breathing. That, that is tough. It's a challenge. Gladiator is fantastic. I've said that the last two recordings. I'm not going to harp on that. Um, weights for kettlebells for beginners. I would say men start with a 16. I would suggest buying your kettlebells in pairs. But if you're new, train with one. The reason being the shipping. Um, the shipping's the same. If you order from Rogue, the shipping's the same on one and two kettlebells. So if you order a pair in the long run, you save yourself between 40 and $60. If you live in Ohio, I'm pretty sure they still offer this. I don't live in Ohio. I live in Pennsylvania. If you live in Ohio, Rogue has free shipping. Um, or they used to, so that's good. Order them in pairs, train with one at first, but that way, when you're ready for the second one, you don't have to order it and pay extra shipping. Women should start with eight. Um, if they're just new to working out in general, an eight kilogram bell is fine. If you're a gym lady, get a 12. If you're particularly strong, in the gym, go ahead and get a 16. That's 35 pounds. Same thing applies to you. Order them in pairs. Um, I would suggest getting 18s after your 16s. Once you're, once you've spent at least six months with double 16s. So your first year, the first six months, you use a single 16. Or, you know, your starting bell. You use a single of that. It, it doesn't matter the weight, man or woman, all right? So you, you do six months with your starting weight. Then you do six months, double that. So your first year, you have um, that modality right there. The first six months, you get good with the kettlebell. The second six months, you practice double kettlebells with the, the same weight there. From there... For men, I would jump up to 18s. Um, that's 40 pounds a piece. The reason being is that getting those two kilo jumps um, without getting overly priced, in my opinion, overly priced uh, custom kettlebells, like, um, I'll just, I don't care. Uh, Kettlebell Kings is a bit overpriced. There's no shipping on their stuff. But you're basically paying shipping with the extra cost of Kettlebell Kings. I would only suggest getting those if you plan to do competition. Then you buy their competition bells. But I would stick with Rogue. It's a little cheaper. And in my experience, the uh, shipping costs is still less expensive than a pair of Kettlebell Kings. Kettlebell Kings is probably better quality though. But at the end of the day, it's an iron ball with a handle on it. I don't really care personally if the coating comes off after some hard sweaty training. It's not that big a deal to me. <clears throat> I would absolutely avoid Levy Stark's kettlebells. They are no shade, right? No shade, but like they're seriously, seriously overpriced, like ridiculously overpriced along with his training programs. G garbage. Obviously I'm not a competitor. I don't sell kettlebells. I don't sell uh, training programs. I put everything on the internet. <laughs> I've said if people want to work with me, you can email me. I'll, I'll go with you there. Um, so there's no incentive for me to do that. I just genuinely, ridiculously overpriced. <sighs> um, if you have more money to spend and you want to get um, adjustable bells that'll go all the way up, up to double 32s, maybe 40s, Mark Wildman's uh, adjustable kettlebell deal is like, between six and eight hundred dollars, I can't remember. But for that price, if you have it up front, you just get adjustable bells that go all the way from I think it starts at um, eight kilos. It might even be lighter than that, and it'll go all the way up to uh, at least thirty twos. I mean that'll last you for fucking ever. And it, last time I clocked the price, it was around 
it was between six and eight hundred dollars. It might be a little bit more expensive now. This was a couple years ago, but if you have it outright, go with that because adjustable kettlebells are fine. And um, I've seen his product. Um, it's it's well made. It's good. I just don't. Um, I like having a collection personally of just a bunch of different bells because the goal is eventually uh, a full blown gym. So like I'm I'm buying this stuff for a prolonged purpose. Also, when I started buying mine, his uh, adjustable bells weren't out, so I couldn't have bought them even if I wanted to. So I just kind of stuck with that. But um, that's a good deal if you have the money outright to get them. I would go with those. Otherwise, I would just stick with Rogue. Because um, yeah, Kettlebell Kings has better quality in terms of the finish. But who cares? It's a it's a weighted iron ball. It, it doesn't matter. Unless you leave these outside in horrible weather conditions, they will outlive you. They will probably outlive your children if you take moderate care of them. I don't wipe mine down when I'm done sweating on them, for example. Um, you know, it's not that big a deal. Well, yeah, there's that. My recommendation for that. As far as training programs go, don't, don't pay for them. There's so many free programs on the internet. And really with kettlebells, you're basically limited by your imagination anyway. I strongly suggest the Gladiator as your first double kettlebell training program. It's fantastic. It scales with your ability the whole way up. Uh, you know how I make the Gladiator more difficult? Get heavier kettlebells. Uh, I guarantee you doing 20 minutes with 28s is going to be brutal. Doing 20 minutes with 32s is going to be more brutal. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. It's a, it's a fantastic program. It scales incredibly well throughout your whole training life. Um, there's no need to pay anyone for specific kettlebell programs. You can pay people to instruct you on how to do the thing, but you do not need to pay anyone to give you workouts. It's a complete waste of money. Don't do it. There's so much free shit on the internet. And like I said, if you can't figure anything else out, swing, clean, press, and squat. There you go. There's no need to waste your money on training programs. Uh, peace.